Brace yourself. Brace yourself. Oh, God. Um, if there are two more upsetting faces to see on television, I don't know who they are. Um, Mark Levin is on um, Mario uh, Butteromo's show. Um, <laughs> Levin put this clip up. Levin, Joe Biden is destroying this country, Mr. Producer. Joe Biden is destroying this country. Um, I did not realize that he was, he's reporting live from China, but we'll, we'll see. This is on Mornings with Maria. How do you have a morning like Maria? Um, I feel like I should do this whole thing with like, just kind of, like, I got an injection. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. All right, here we go. I got to see what this is. Biden's progressive policies and the path forward. There is no path forward. Did you not see the last section, Mark Levin? It's, it's game over. The country is dead. Inflation, car, gas prices. The American experiment is over. Can't you tell? I'm kidding. It's not. I got you. But admit it. When I said that, you chubbed a little, didn't you? Come on. You did. It's okay. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yes. That was then... Oh God. Candidate Joe Biden in February of 2020, revealing his intention to become the most progressive president in U.S. history. He okay, we don't get to see the clip? Okay, we'll just assume that's what he said. I intend to be the most progressive candidate in history. He is well on his way. Ruling Good for him. I, I, it was probably during the Sanders uh, debate, right? Or no, it was maybe it was after the Sanders debate when he won, when he won the nomination and he said i beat the socialists was it that one right. by executive order majorities in both chambers ramming through the most radical and expensive agenda this country has ever seen well not the most expensive obviously the highway bill initially you know i mean dollar for dollar all without a single republican vote that's weird because uh republican voters are actually quite supportive of it weird why would you have 60% of Republican voters in the country support a lot of this shit and not a single Republican vote? Why would that be? I mean, I'm not, I'm not here to judge Maria uh, Botox Romo, but um, I, it sounds a lot like swampy Washington bullshit to me. That's called unity. Mark <laughs> unity. Um, Mark Levin, uh, author of American Marxism. I, don't, I mean, I guess if you want to learn how to be a Marxist, uh, Mark Levin's your guy. Levin's new book, American Marxism, examines how we can protect our democracy from this kind of government overreach. He is also... By becoming Marxists? The host of Life, Liberty, and Levin, which airs on Fox News on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. Let's wind him up and watch him go. He doesn't at all look like a, uh, a, a, a camera test for a character that Richard Dreyfus turned down. We are all viewers. Mark, it's good to see you. No, we're not. We have 702 rumbles on this, kiddo. No, no, we're not. This is his channel. You, thanks very much for being here this morning. Well, he didn't have anything else to do. Your reaction to the agenda as you see it. My reaction to the agenda is that Joe Biden and his merry group of uh, proletariat supporters there... Uh, they are very cheery, considering, you know, how Marxist they are. I always thought of Marxists as grim folk. In the uh, White House, <laughs> are destroying this country. Oh, that's, hence the title. If I'm communist China, and I'm... And you probably are. I mean, you've got the landmass. Communist North Korea, and I'm... You're both? I'm communist Cuba, and I'm... Cuba? <laughs> is that a, is that a video game from the 80s? Communist... Cuba? No, that's Cubert. Sorry. It's Venezuela. And communist Venezuela, if you're all of those things. If I'm the regime in Iran and so forth, all of our enemies, I'm... Well, they're not communists. That's a whole different thing. That's a religious, you know, that's completely... You, you're kind of spoiling your premise. But continue. Sitting back and I'm laughing because Joe Biden is destroying this country from within and I don't have to raise a finger. He is a human pandemic. He's done more damage to this country in six months than communist China could ever do to us. And he is a great... Well, then obviously... China is not and has never been any kind of a threat. Because <laughs> if this is the damage that they wish for. Threat and his administration is a grave threat. They're a threat. Okay. Mark, 
on your premise, can you at least leap to what the damage is? To our civil liberties and free speech. Wait a minute, because you can't be on Twitter? They're a threat to our economic system. Um, because... What? Me because you think Medicare for all? Oh, I don't understand. Which part? Oh, because the stock market's doing pretty well. Oh, bond yields. They're a threat to our sovereignty. Open. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, we're opening the borders and letting everyone in. Wait, shit, that would be... That'd still be those people coming in and becoming citizens, and they would, they would become Americans, therefore diminishing the you know, sort of the hardworking, uh, life-affirming, um, hope-seeking humans from another country and bringing them here to seek their fortune and build their lives and do good. Um, and those people, obviously, if they're from Venezuela, like you said, they, they're escaping communism, so therefore they're not going to come here and jumpstart it, obviously. Open border. This man hasn't even traveled to the southern border to see what his policies are doing because he doesn't give a damn. He knows what they're doing. Yeah, they're, he's telling them, don't come in, you can't come in, and they're not coming in. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's probably a stampede. I missed it. Do you guys have video of people stampeding across the border? Um, this push for critical race theory and... Uh, he's not pushing for critical race theory. You're pushing for critical race theory. By the way, I, um, I have been doing some of my, um, uh, as I'm wont to do my own little background research on stuff so that I'm not talking out of my ass, unlike Mark Levin. And um, um, I've come to the determination that critical race theory at its root is a codification of white supremacy. It is one of the most white supremacist, uh, like subversive plans I have ever seen in my life. Everything about it, uh, like supports the substructure of white supremacy as it stands and asserts its power now and forever. And it, it literally ends in a pitiful die out at the end, like, there's nothing we could do about it. It's kind of amazing. And CRT doesn't exist. It's fucking ridiculous. It's, you know, there's like, it's like in a philosophy department at a couple of colleges. What he's worried about is diversity training. Like, he literally thinks, uh, yeah, uh, you might want to be nice to the black people in the office instead of saying stupid shit. Like, that, that to him is critical race theory. And this, uh, and this lat crit and all the other things I talk about in America. Lat, lat crit? Latino critical something? Lat, oh, I don't know the street language, Mark. American Marxism. You know, I heard Lindsey Graham said, I've known Joe Biden a long time. This is a different Joe Biden. Maybe you should talk to Clarence Thomas and some of the other people who were abused and very badly mistreated when he was on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Wait a minute. If he'd have treated him badly, he never would have made it. How he lied about them, how he smeared them. Maybe we ought to look at this man. He got on the, he's on the fucking Supreme Court. Man's career, it's a career of lying and plagiarism and a, a, a political chameleon. He was never a moderate. He would do whatever he had to do to draw attention to himself and write. Uh, we're, talk we're, we're talking about Trump now, right? Now, he's in legacy mode. How can he be met with these liberals? Well, if he's not... If he, that's good though, isn't it? What, if you want, how does he, does he want his legacy to be? I'm the guy that destroyed America. Again, you almost, you, you were so close to actually having a cogent argument. I mean, it's stupid, but at least it would have existed as an actual argument. And then you fuck the whole thing up with the legacy mode comment. He's liberal historians. He wants to be bigger than FDR. He wants to be. Well, if he, he can't be bigger than FDR if the country disappears, dumb shit. Bigger than how about you uh, pay attention to what's going on in this country, Joe? How yeah, Joe. You're watching his show right now. You're wa you Joe Biden, you clearly get up and watch Maria Bartiromo show, especially when Mark Levin is a guest. Talk to him. Tell him, Mark. Audience of one. Let's do it, buddy. How about you pay attention to what your policies are doing to this country? We've been... Well, it, it, he would if they, you know, once they're implemented. I mean, literally, the child tax credit started, like, Wednesday... You might want to, like, get them kind of up and rolling. I mean, we're still dealing with the death toll from last year, and the, all the new deaths are Trump assholes who, even though they believe Trump created the vaccine in his fucking garage, won't take it. Inflation that's shooting through the roof. And as I was watching your show earlier, Maria, $3.5 <laughs> trillion in human infrastructure? Hum yes. Human infrastructure? We call that socialism. <laughs> Uh, okay, hold on one second. Uh, the, uh, you, let me look up the, 
I think it, it, you know, human resources is one of the things with, you know, we'll work on this. Okay, so let's look up human infrastructure. That's the nickname they gave it in the bill. Mm hmm. Um, let's describe U.S. news. Here. Um, here you go. Um, Biden sells human infrastructure plan despite, it's obviously a soylent green thing. It's, it's uh, socialist green as people. Um, president is pushing his human infrastructure proposal, even his bipartisan package addressing traditional needs like roads and bridges, faces obstacles in Congress. It's always going to face obstacles. It's still going to get passed. Um, the infrastructure package negotiated by a bipartisan team of lawmakers. By the way, this is the in human infrastructure argument is all about uh, a values argument for 2022 and 2024. Just so you know. Today, the American people can be proud. We've shown ourselves that American democracy can come through. He said of the $1.2 trillion plan to, dish, uh, to deal with roads, bridges, broadband, lead-free pipes, all that stuff. But the human infrastructure is intertwined with our physical infrastructure, Biden added. Where he turned the municipal transit utility and touted his spending package, the president said he will keep making the case for the two plans until his job is done, until our human infrastructure needs are met. However, the job is far from done, even though, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see. Nobody, uh, nothing presents Democrats a winning package of labor environment again, uh, but the deal is something in peril. We already saw that. Biden on Sunday walked back the implied threat that they're going to do so. Biden wonder why programs such as child tax credit, refundable tax credit for low-income parents was not considered as important as tax cutting Republicans. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, why is there not a tax break for working folks? I mean, it sounds like socialism. Uh, for the super wealthy, uh, uh, for the super wealthy called tax breaks. Now, those of you that make over $400,000, I love you, but I don't mind a little bit if your, tax, uh, uh, if your taxes go up a little bit. Um, if we raise the corporate tax to 28%, you know, you know how much money that raises? $1.4 trillion. He then added that uh, 30 uh, Fortune 500 companies paid zero in taxes, made billions of dollars. I'm not trying to punish anybody. I'm saying, let's be fair. Um, sounds like commie stuff to me. I mean, God. Um, let's see. The in, uh, they have the actual, let's see. What's the content of the package that they have? Um, uh, da, 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 da. um, yeah, okay. Here we go. Senate Democrats reach $3.5 trillion deal for Biden's human infrastructure agenda, Medicare expansion. Okay, so uh, Senate Democrats reached an agreement Tuesday on a $3.5 trillion budget plan, overall budget, everything, which, so it includes this extra stuff. It doesn't cost $3.5 trillion. That would expand Medicare, uh, fund climate change initiatives, and fulfill other parts of Joe Biden's economic agenda the Democrats hope to pass on top of a bipartisan infrastructure bill. After a lengthy meeting with uh, Democrats, blah, blah, Schumer said they were willing to spend $600 billion in new spending. Uh, Biden has proposed a bipartisan infrastructure plan. The amount of the new spending comes to around $4.1 trillion, close to Biden's full infrastructure and family agendas. Every major program that uh, Biden asked for is funded in a robust way, Schumer said. Human infrastructure proposals include expanded caregiver... Uh, caregiving for the disabled and elderly, universal pre-kindergarten, subsidized child care, free community college, national paid family lead, and extended child tax credits. There's also an assortment of environmental initiatives led by a new clean energy standard forcing power companies to gradually shift from emitting carbon dioxide and incentives for clean energy, such as wind, uh, wind and power. I think he means the wind and solar. It's an understandable mistake. Schumer said Democrats also added a plan to expand Medicare, uh, long a battle cry for progressives, including coverage for dental, vision, and hearing. Biden met with Senate Democrats at the Capitol Wednesday to discuss the agreement. I think we're going to get a lot done, he told reporters when he left the building. The White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki suggested there are not yet enough votes to pass the package. If there were enough votes for each of these priorities, there would be uh, a vote and it would have happened. Uh, Biden will continue to reach out to Democrats and Republicans to help sell the package. Um, by the way, this is the negotiating point. The, uh, and again, asking for, asking for the 3.5 is how you get to, get out of here, I'm not printing anything, um, asking for the 3.5 is how you get what you ultimately want, which might be lower, but at least you're swinging for the fences, which is everybody's complaint from when it, they were in the Obama administration and a lesson that Biden took from that and learned on. So there you go. Um, and by the way, uh, universal pre-K, children's lunches, uh, caregiving for elders, that kind of stuff, all subsidizing it, by the way, for low-income people. All of it releasing people from burdensome activities that will stop them from starting a business, would allow them to, you know, work more and more productively. All that stuff that actually adds to the economy, if that burden is taken away, is actually an investment in helping them. The two years of universal uh, uh, 
community college, for example, optional for one, and secondly, only help it helps grow the vocational folks which the red states rely on. This is understand that the two years of free community college because they put it that way is also two years of, of vocational training. Uh, and then there's all these extended vocational training things that the government picks up in other programs. So you can do as much as four years and never pay a goddamn dime. And that helps people who end up working on oil rigs, working on solar farms, working on planes, all that shit. Um, that's who it helps. That's one of the sales points. Remember when I was talking about you leaving broadband and it gets, and the broadband thing, by the way, all got in the bipartisan bill. Everybody's for it. Absolutely helped sell it. Um, and that's what I told them to do. Same thing about two years of community college. You guys need to start saying two years of community college or vocational training. Because it's the same thing in terms of the cost of it, but people will see, like, uh, people who are going to college use the two years of community college as the base to get them uh, to eliminate credits and lower the cost of ultimately going to college or university. And the people who are, you know, going into a trade, like being a trucker or something, they'll use the vocational group. And you need to talk to both groups. But that it's available. It's the same goddamn thing. So tell them both. Tell gr both groups. And, uh, sorry, I have to, um, why do I always get these? I mean, I guess I should be flattered that there are all these people trying to sell uh, um, psychic healers on my Facebook page. All right, here we go. And then 1.2 right. trillion in hard infrastructure. Uh-huh. Don't say that uh, too loud. It'll upset Maria. And they have a $6 trillion proposed budget. In the next 30 days, they want to spend $10.7 trillion on top of the $2 trillion they already spent and the $2.3 trillion before that. They no, because the, there's already an existing budget. The 6.5 is part of the 10-year budgetary plan. It doesn't add anything. The other shit is the stuff that they want to add. It's the rolling budget that's there already, including all the military shit that Trump already wanted and signed up for. They're going to destroy this economic system for our... We have a $26 trillion economy every year. Imagine if your house and your car and all your medical needs, and uh, an entire, like, you, you could redo your driveway, which was 10,000 miles long, whatever. Um, and all of that was half of your yearly salary. You could do all that for half of your yearly intake. And you can, you can spread it out over a decade. For our kids and our grandkids, they're destroying our classrooms with his damn executive orders and the NEA and the AFT. They're just the executive orders on the NEA. Oh, how, how are they destroying classes that everybody gets pencils? Destroying the border. We know why they're doing it. They're in. Well, we didn't destroy the border. Trump's wall destroyed the border. Because a lot of the, 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 the Trumpy guys in the CPB, uh, you know, or uh, sorry, uh, CBP, the Customs and Border Patrol, those guys all think that since there's a wall there, fuck it. So that, you know, the people that slip through are because they're just, well, the wall should work, right? Walls and wheels, right? Importing what they hope will be Democrats while they're excluding yeah. the Cubans because they think they'll be Republicans. No, they just don't want them to drown. In the meantime, yeah. what else do they want to do, Maria? What do they want to do, Maria? They're attacking our constitutional system in the Senate, the courts, the filibuster rule, and the Senate itself. Filibuster's not in the Constitution. Mark, fuck are you talking about? Uh, look, uh, you Oh, that was quick. They went to commercial and they came back. They both went, went, have I been talking out of my ass? Let me read something real quick. I think I made, I, I think everything I said in that last segment was bullshit. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, it is. Damn. A couple of examples of all that you've just said happened just this week. Yeah, t thanks, Maria. At least you bring the facts. Let's hear it. Biden agreed to lift all sanctions on Iran, okay? As Iranians tried to kidnap a journalist in New York, that, no, no comment on... One minute. Um, let's see. Biden sanctions Iran. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I understand Marie is dumb. I, 
I, I mean, are you getting <laughs> Biden administration eyeing what's this? What's this little phrase, Maria? New sanctions on Iran oil sales if nuclear talks fail. Um, Biden administration is reportedly considering slapping new sanctions on Iran's oil sales to China if talks to revive an Iran nuclear deal fail. Uh, um, the U.S. is looking into placing stricter sanctions on the oil sales to China, which because they already have them and they're not getting run to the ones that they want, but they're adding them. Fuck, man. Maria, can you at least make it a little more difficult for me? Here you go. Wall, Wall Street Journal. This one's owned by Rupert Murdoch, so he can't be lying. U.S. weighs new sanctions on Iran's oil sales to China to China if nuclear talks fail. Um, how about, uh, so, but this happened this week. They're just going to forgive the sanctions, is what she said. Um, here's, uh, this is, it, it, this is it, what she's saying. U.S. lifts some Iran sanctions amid stalled nuclear talks. That's probably what she's talking about. I mean, she said all, but some, all, I mean, she's a postmodernist. Words don't have any meaning. Up is down, left is right, uh, whatever. Um... Let's see. Uh, the Biden administration lifted sanctions on three former Iranian officials and several energy companies amid stalled nuclear negotiations, signaling Washington's willingness to further ease economic pressure on Iran if the country changes course. U.S. Treasury Department on Thursday repealed sanctions on former senior national Iran oil company officials and several companies involved in shipping and trading petrochemical products. The administration described the moves as routine administrative actions, saying the officials were removed from the U.S. blacklist because they no longer held positions in the sanctions entities. Son of a bitch. Look at that, Maria. I was so with you. I was so that you were this close, Maria. The Biden administration was dropping sanctions on Iranian oil executives. There's obviously because Hunter Biden probably has a deal in Iran and stuff, and then it turns out, no, they dropped him because these fuckers don't work there anymore. But officials familiar talks underway in Vienna <clears throat> on the future of the 2015 multi uh, multilateral Iran nuclear agreement, said Biden administration has been looking at how it could inject momentum into negotiations. Oil prices tumbled nearly 2% after the news, but quickly regained their losses, continuing to trade over $70 a barrel. These actions demonstrate our commitment to lifting sanctions in the event of a change in status or behavior by sanctioned persons, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in a statement accompanying the notice of the action. Oh, Maria... I expect this kind of moronic, simple-minded goofiness from Mark, Mr. Producer, Levin. But uh, shouldn't, don't you have a, aren't you on Fox Business? Let's see. Uh, let me find out. Um, uh, here you go. The NBC News by Instagram. Here you go. This is, this is probably what she's talking about. This is April. Biden administration eyes major roll back in Iran sanctions to revive nuke deal. Any concessions beyond nuclear-specific sanctions would likely be seized upon by Republican critics and... Uh, the Biden administration is considering... There you go. This is according to the NBC News. Now, this is from April. This isn't in the last week. In the last week, you saw what I just showed you, which is nowhere near this, but this is what was being presented by the AP in April. The Biden administration is considering a near-wholesale rollback of some of the mo of some. <laughs> of the most stringent Trump era sanctions. That's kind of a lot, right? Wholesale rollback of some of the most stringent Trump era sanctions imposed on Iran in a bid to get the Islamic like talk about a bifurcation. Check that shit out, guys. Is that nuts? That is an amazing sentence, Associated Press. What are you doing? Considering a near, near wholesale rollback of some of the most stringent Trump era sanctions. I guess there are other Trump era sanctions that aren't stringent or are less stringent that are going to stay with the sum of the wholesale rollback. Fucking hell. <laughs> This was, I thought this was going to, honest to God, I thought I'd walked into an accidental trap where I like, oh shit, look at that. She was right about this somehow. Nope. <laughs> uh, of course, they're talking out of their ass because American officials have refused to discuss which sanctions are being considered for removal. 
But they've said they're open to lifting any sanctions that are inconsistent with the nuclear deal or that deny Iran the relief it would be entitled to should it return to the compliance of the Accord, which is the stuff in the original one, which you could just go fucking read the original one and you would know which one they're talking about. But that's too much work, AP, I guess. Biden administration is considering a near wholesale rollback of some of the most stringent Trump era sanctions imposed by... God, can hell. This is like the domestic terrorism thing where they're like, you know, white supremacists uh, turn out, uh, you know, are the... Uh, biggest domestic terror threat of the racist elitist groups in you know subcategory subsection D. On on that, they eased sanctions on Venezuela. Look at that. They eased. They wow. Hold on. Let's see. U.S. eases Venezuela. I'm. This is going to be terrible. Venezuela. Whoops. I can spell. Uh, sanctions. What kind of? What kind of evil? Probably like, um, you know, they they lifted the sanction on on the deportation of pinkos. Um, now this is, I mean, this is obviously something that's going to be. When I look this up, I don't think I have to tell anybody that this is more than likely going to be the kind of stuff where it's just so that Hunter Biden and his buddies can make money. He's U.S. eases crippling Venezuela sanction. Sanction. The rest of the v crippling Venezuelan sanctions still in place. But this particular crippling Venezuelan sanction. I'm sorry, Mar Maria, real quick. I know I hate to back up on Rumble because it's a pain in the ass. But, um... What was that again? They eased sanctions on Venezuela. They eased... You're not... You're close. They eased sanction on Venezuela. Allows propane deals. Um, let's see. Caracas, Venezuela. God damn, I wish this was harder. Maria, please. Can you bring your A-game next time? Kicking your ass over here. Caracas, Venezuela. U.S. Go government on Monday moved, moved to ease... Move to ease. All right. Not quite easing, but a crippling sanction imposed by the Trump administration. So not one that we'd had on besides like even the time on Venezuela by allowing companies to export propane to the troubled South American country. Oh, so we're not allowing Venezuela to export propane for their own money making. We're allowing other countries to export propane to Venezuela. A step that could mitigate a shortage that has pushed people to cook on charcoal or wood grills. The Biden administration's policy decision of wide impact in Venezuela comes as the socialist government of President Nicolas Maduro has begun to allow foreign aid into the country and has taken other steps to signal it is willing to engage with Washington. So they're engaged in the back and forth about this and it's to help the fucking people so they don't starve to death and they're not cooking in a way that creates more uh, greenhouse gases and ends up being, a uh, you know, a a climate pandemic caused by this. Fucking hell. Sanction. Sanction. I got so much to give you have. A sanction. <laughs> I'm just trying to live. Well, look at that economy. We've got video of the Taliban executing Afghan soldiers. We have video of the Taliban executing Afghan soldiers. So we should have stayed. Maria Bartiromo, Mark Levin, we need to stay in Afghanistan. Okay. Fought for us in the U.S. and we abandoned them and yet... Uh, no. We, we're not... They're not coming with us. We're taking the translators out. The soldiers stay there. They are in a fight for their country. Uh, why are you? And why is this asshole smiling at the death of Afghan so Oh, that's why. The, uh, Mayorkas is saying to Cubans, "Don't come here." What's the motivation for all of this? Yeah, I mean, fix, take all those things together, including the stuff she just fucking patently made up. Shove them into a ball, Mark Levin, and give us uh, America. Want, uh, uh, Biden wants to destroy America. First of all, Joe Biden is worse than Neville Chamberlain. You know, ne <laughs> yeah, Trump last year, Trump's like the Chinese are being great. This is so good. They're being so transparent. We sold them a bunch of beef and corn. 
just go ahead and kill 600,000 Americans. I, I want this deal to go down on my record as the greatest trade deal ever. They're being very transparent. They told us everything we need to know. I feel differently about the trade deal now. Trump was Chamberlain if Chamberlain had given Hitler weekly hand jobs. You know, Neville Chamberlain said peace in our time. Joe Biden... Did, did he? ...is actually funding our enemy. I mean... Funding our enemy. Oh, because people can bring food into the... No. They would be spending that money, not making that money. Oh. I mean, you have to say that Neville Chamberlain didn't give billions of dollars to the uh, Third Reich. Uh, and yet, Joe... Well, they, didn't, they weren't holding billions of dollars... Um, let's say after World War I, before World War II, the, the British did not have a bunch of German national money, Deutschmarks, locked up in a vault, and, the, and their agreements with all the other countries in the area, like the European Union, you know, if it existed at the time, had dictated that if they keep somebody's money and they don't have a reason for doing it, that they have to pay interest on it, so they would eventually get, never mind. Joe Biden is giving and wants to give tens of billions of dollars to the Iranian regime, which... Why? They, they got all their money. We're not giving them any money anymore. Like, that's done. That was money being held. It's done. It's spent. It's fucking gone. I don't understand. By the way, I, I know they want to live that point. Like, you know, he could go, Biden and Obama gave the better. You can make that case and bitch about it, even though it's misguided and dumb. But... Where is this? Where are we going to give the Iranians ten tens of billions of dollars? Which has as its purpose to wipe out the Jews in Israel, wipe out its neighbors, and... Yeah, but that, so does the evangelical base in the country. I mean, they need all the Jews to go back to Israel so they can... and Armageddon. Um, uh, ...ICBMs with nuclear warheads that can reach our cities. It's... Oh, you mean like Kim Jong-un did during the Trump administration while... Uh, Trump was giving him a rusty trombone. Insanity. We have an insane administration. <laughs> or perhaps sanity looks crazy to crazy man. That is pushing these radical mm -hmm. Marxist agenda movements. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially this uh, stock market stuff. Uh, you can see as more hate for the Republican Party than he does for the regime in Cuba. Well, why is... Is he negotiating with the regime in Cuba and saying, I trust them to do the right thing? Because that's what he's been saying about the Republican Party. Um, and uh, what's... Keep, keep trying. No, Mark, this is good stuff. Dig, man. Dig deep. It's the motivation. I'll tell you the motivation. Tell us the motivation, Mark. Decade after decade of indoctrination on these college campuses. That's right. It was it, Biden hanging out on college campuses everywhere, being taught Marxism by Richard Wolff. He's front think tanks uh, that are some of them are funded by the Chinese but some of them are just leftists yeah they don't need even the Chinese they turn down the Chinese funding because how can you be a communist if you're taking funding at all they just have drum circles uh, they ha they're having the run of the place they're in the run of the administration Mark would know he's got the runs they right are now secreting That's themselves right. into the they secre he's secreting departments right now. And, and into the they're secreting themselves into the departments what the fuck are you nodding at Maria yeah. There's uh, 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 offices to... My, you know what my attitude is? Yeah, back up. You know what? Back up and try again. I, 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 you lost to everybody on the whole Biden was indoctrinated in, on college campuses. Maria, I know we're near the end. Yes, you are definitely near the end, Mark. I don't care yeah. why. They <laughs> <laughs> I don't care why. My premise is dead in the water anyways. Why am I looking for a motivation factor on something that I just made up? I forgot. Maria, you have to clear these questions with my people first. They need, they need to be defeated. Okay. <laughs> they need to be crushed or we're going to lose this country. Well, I, I mean, you might have thought about that last year when you're, uh, you were running the worst asshole you could possibly run for president. Yeah, but, but he keeps spewing out lies about these voting bills. Real quick. Yeah. 20 seconds. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? But he's got this constitutional right, and it's Jim Crow. 16 states have come up with new laws for a reason. Yeah, the reason is is because Trump has told all of his voters that you can't trust elections, so they're doing this as a PR scheme to bring them back on board. 
Yeah, don't worry about the voter fraud thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We couldn't put Trump back in. That's a bunch of Lego mumbo jumbo. You probably wouldn't understand. But we passed a bunch of uh, no illegals are going to vote this time. We promise bills. So just come on back. And there's a reason he's not specific and the media aren't specific because none of these proposals are Jim Crow. Well, not, not specific. It's a modern day Jim Crow. It's an analogy. Like, like your head isn't an ostrich egg with fur on it. It's just, it's an analogy. Oh, and yet Joe Biden would know about Jim Crow since early in his Senate career, his buddies with segregationists and separatists in this country. Uh, so he'll, okay. he'll which is weird because that was a long time ago, but you're friends with segregationists and separatists now, now. So one way if he has to, the other way if he has to. So, so he's flexible and uh, you can't pin him down on what he believes. And so that was a flailing segment. Thanks, Maria. Christ.